This is a UV torch. We were messing around with the UV pen Alex. beforehand, and I didn't realise it was permanent. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever see Alex in the street, bring a UV lamp with you. Hello, and welcome to another episode of QI Excess. My name is Alex, and I'm joined by James Hello. and Anna. Hi. And we are three of the QI elves, and this week the QI episode we are talking about is quaffing, which was your episode, James, wasn't it? Well, I was a curator, we all do all the work to put it all together and then one elf takes it all and puts it into a script. And the reason I chose quaffing is because there are so few words beginning with Q. <laughs> that was basically the last one I could think of. Um, but it's all about food and drink, quaffing and scoffing. And then I handed it to Anna who then ripped it apart. I did indeed. So James and I are script editors. James in this case wrote it, he can't edit his own script because uh, he'll think it's all great. So I took it. <laughs> And it was, actually, it was a really tough one, this one. Uh, it took a lot of work. But I managed to pull it into something that I think was vaguely passable in the end. I think we need to have this conversation <laughs> off camera. <laughs> <laughs> we worked out that I curated the script yes. and Anna script edited the script. Yes. What the hell do you do? This is my annual review all over again. <laughs> I do the klaxon, the alarm that goes off whenever someone says a wrong answer or an obvious answer or a really bad joke that was so bad that we were able to come up with it in the writer's room. <laughs> I think the question people always ask about the klaxons is, is everything done beforehand or do we write them during the show? No, it's all done beforehand because that's like the rules of the game. It has to be obvious enough or obviously wrong enough that we thought of it in the meeting. So we write them all out in advance and I have um, a touch screen that's like a grid and there's one possible klaxon in every grid. And I'm just sort of sitting over there with my fingers hovering over them waiting for them to say the answer. <laughs> uh, so what was in it that we particularly liked? I quite like that chewing gum question. Uh, and this didn't make it into the show. How long does it take for chewing gum to pass through your system? Well, I think as a kid we were told seven years. Any guesses, Alex? Uh, uh, 20 years. No, it's obviously not 20. <laughs> it wasn't going to be more than seven years, was it? So it actually takes less long than a lot of foods, and it's definitely going to be out within seven days, basically. And you won't break it down or anything like that, but it will pop out before the week's out. Pop out? In a bubble? <laughs> it pops out. We did try it, though, so I gave Anna some chewing gum. <laughs> And we've been sifting through your feces ever since. <laughs> there is, there's a poor intern that I'm taking to the toilet with me now every time. Chewing gum has, it has an interesting history. It started in Mexico. And actually, I think we didn't mention this on the show, but uh, the person who popularised chewing gum and gave us all chewing gum was the president of Mexico. Santa Ana was a 19th century. He was president of Mexico 11 times or something. And then eventually he was properly exiled. And he brought with him chewing gum, essentially. He was famous because he had his leg stolen by the Americans, wasn't he? <laughs> he did. I think twice as yeah. well. He had won his... both legs or the same what? leg? Twice? He lost a leg and then he had a fake leg and then that got stolen in a raid and then I think he got a wooden leg afterwards and that got stolen as well. I don't think you call it stealing someone's leg if you have sort of blown it off in war. <laughs> 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 it's not leg theft. So uh, one bit of the show that I really liked was the energy drink section oh, yeah. uh, where we gave all of the panellists a little shot of energy drink. Something that wasn't said on the show was I found a whole load of names of energy drinks. You can get cocaine energy drink, you can get Semtex energy drink and you can get pimp juice. <laughs> energy drink, okay. And we were discussing this in the office yesterday, and I reckon Pimp Juice sounds more like the name of a Snoop Dogg single than it does <laughs> of an energy drink. Yeah. Okay, so James Rawson, who's He's behind right the there. camera <laughs> over there. You can't see him, but we can. Has made me a quiz, which I'm gonna test you guys, so you haven't seen this. Okay. And I'm gonna give you some words or phrases, and they are either the names of a Snoop Dogg single, or the names of an energy drink. Well, thank God I'm guess. such an avid fan of Snoop Dogg. Me too. He's, <laughs> he's 19th easy, century, yeah. isn't he? First of all, it blows my mind. I'd say it's a full sentence, so it's more likely to be a record. Yeah, I think, I think Snoop Dogg, you're right. Easy to rhyme, too. Yes. It blows my mind. What a bind. <laughs> I imagine Snoop Dogg yeah. says that, doesn't he? Yeah. That's a lovely behind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you're right, it is a Snoop Dogg single. Uh, next one, Urge Intense. I'm going to go Snoop Dogg. Energy drink. It is energy drink. Oh. Sensual seduction. I don't think of Snoop Dogg as very sensual, <laughs> personally. And then maybe, maybe it's a Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah, no, he is. I know, I'm going to go with uh, energy drink then. Anna's right again. <laughs> Yeah. She's actually good at this. He is sensual. The single is actually called Sexual Eruption, and this is a censored version of that title. <laughs> uh, one more. Who's your daddy? 
<laughs> and now I'll do the quiz. <laughs> Extremely personal question, James. Um, oh, it's got to be because he's mates with P Daddy, Puff Daddy, um, what's his Sean face? Coombs. Sean Coombs. I can't believe I knew that. Uh, <laughs> so I think it must be Snoop Dogg. Alex, redeem yourself. I'm, no, I'm going to say any drink because it's the last question. It's going to be a red herring. You're absolutely right. Energy drink. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, James Rawson, for all those. Crap. Wow. We broke the set. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. It got a bit out of hand. OK, well, I've got a game for you guys. Mm. Okay. Oh, cool. So um, I'm going to put three glasses on the table and you just close your eyes while I fill them with either gin and tonic or lemonade. OK? OK. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a good thing if you're half a metre away from the gin and you can smell it? Is that a sign of quality? I think that's just a sign of dependency. OK, open your eyes. You need to find out which, which two have the gin in. Right. Great. Except you're not allowed to drink them. You're not allowed to touch it, taste it, smell it. But I will give you this. Oh. Ooh. This is actually a UV torch, so can we get the lights off, please? Uh, so, shine the torch out the glasses. Mm -hmm. So, quinine Ooh. shows up under UV light. Hey! Oh. Good to know that you go, James! <laughs> <laughs> and this is what happens every time we go to a bar together, isn't it, Anna? It, what, I have two gin and tonics and you have a lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have the lights back on. Of course, the other way to ensure you never get lemonade is to drink from the bottle. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs>